gentlemen, welcome to the Dark Match. As all of you know, we are just a bunch of total WWE marks, so obviously we're all going to be completely in love with the show we're reviewing today, the No Way Out pay-per-view. I am Jingus, your host, and also with me are fellow WWE Universe fanatics such as... I am your foxy friend Backlash, and holy shit, that was amazing. <laughs> I'm Duo's Angel, and I'd have to agree. <laughs> and I'm Iron Bite. Iron Bite Dash. I'm scared, but here's what's Iron Sheet tweeting now. Why are you? Shia LaBeouf, who the fuck? He is worse than OJ Simpson or Feather. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Apparently, Sheik doesn't know either. That's what I got from that. Shia LaBeouf, you murdered two exes and a uh, new boyfriend. I mean, he goes through these cycles, it appears, and I guess he watched Transformers and is like, you know, that Shia LaBeouf dick. <laughs> I, I, I hate yeah. them. He, he just he watches... happened to pop in like Transformers 2 today. and he, he, he sees someone and he's like, am I supposed to like him or hate him? I know, I'll ask my fans because, well... Wait, why the fuck are we talking about Shia LaBeouf? We got a show to do here, guys. Yeah, okay. show. We, we watched uh, that WWE pay-per-view No Way Out. Yes, yes, and, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes. It had its moments, but I wasn't knocked over by it overall. But yeah, that, that, anyway, that was what I was getting from the rest of the internet. Yeah, I hang out with more than just you guys. Um, I mean, yeah, and, uh, if anybody was wondering, that opening joke of mine about WWE marks is because every time we say anything bad about TNA at all. There's inevitably people in the YouTube comments section saying, Oh, you guys are just WWE marks and you kiss Vince's ass. And you, you love Hornswoggle, don't you? No. Yeah, I don't think they listen to our WWE shows. They just see, Ooh, they're talking oh. about TNA. I love TNA. I'm going to watch this. And then, like an hour later, I must rage at you because that is how I choose to spend my time. Yeah, it's that's like the so same thing. Cool. That's, yeah, that's it's true. the same three people every time who are, I guess, are the only three people left still buying TNA pay per views. Also, who the hell? Proof that they even watch the TNA shows. Also, who the hell has a problem with the Muppets? Like, did you not have a childhood? Oh God! Somebody bitched about us uh, praising the Muppets. Ah, oh, I hate those people now. The Muppets could remake Citizen Kane, and it would be awesome. Whoa, It'd be interesting. Whoa. That's for fucking. Someone trash. just didn't hug you enough. That's the problem. Oh, we are now attacking people's personal lives, and that's kind yes, of fucked up, even do. for us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no way out. We're talking about no way out. Yeah. yeah okay. Indeed. I don't know if anybody else did. I did catch the pre-show. Or, well, fast forwarded through most of it, <laughs> and uh, there was a David Otunga match versus Brodus Claim. It sucked. Move on. It didn't have uh, the finish. There's nothing finish. else to say. No, no, listen to this finish, guys. All right. At one point, uh, Otunga gets knocked outside the ring. Referee's counting. Otunga gets to go back in. Brodus is there waiting for him, and Otunga just stands there beside the ring, staring at them until the referee counts to him. What? I just don't fucking get Joe, that. He walks away. Well, okay, uh, you lost, and you look like a bitch. So... Brodus, who'd been working this knee injury gimmick and whose knee had been horribly worked over throughout the entire match, then danced afterwards. Now, admittedly, he was kind of selling it like, okay, I'm taking it easy on this one leg, but he was still fucking dancing. Wow. On this leg. I have the never. Heard, point I've never I, and I'm going to. I'm going to admit, I did not. I don't watch the pre-shows because. Well, they've obviously stopped caring. Yeah, I mean, when's the last time there was a good match on a pre-show? Miz versus somebody. Oh, speaking of which, no Miz. Uh, to, uh... Yeah, with all the people that they've had to either suspend or put on the injured list, Miz is not getting moved up. 
What well, is up with this? Well, here's the thing. Miz, right now, is in fact filming uh, The Marine 3, because Randy Orton obviously was the worst choice in the world. I don't get that. I mean, yes, I understand he was dishonorably discharged, but... Eh. Yeah, well, they actually yeah. work with the Marine Corps on making these movies. Right, right. So right. I, guess, I guess the Marines were like, uh, yeah, this guy... This guy doesn't... <laughs> Starring just- who? A deserter? <laughs> we'll throw a grenade in his fucking trailer yeah. if he shows up. Yeah. <laughs> and then he had to smoke yeah. pot, and now he's probably... We'll probably never see him again. You know what? As much as... I mean, as much as I do kind of enjoy Randy Orton... I never had to see him, his monotone, expressionless face, except when he's, you know, insane. I wouldn't mind. I don't know. I, no way out. I, I hey, guy, serial I killer would be interesting, but as an action hero, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, what's Curtain Jerk? Curtain what's Jerker the is... <laughs> it's the World Heavyweight title. Damn, it must be WrestleMania. Yeah, I know. No, it's Dolphin versus Shane. Half the pay per views nowadays. Oh, well, with how I, I, I don't understand why the fuck they open with titles. Yeah, especially <laughs> since isn't the Ryback squash like the semi main event tonight? Yeah. Well, it's uh, kind of the cool down match, but we'll get to that. And really, with how mismanaged the world heavyweight title picture has been lately, I'm kind of not surprised. I'm not surprised either, mostly because of the fact that the, ori- the original plan going into this was Alberto Del Rio versus Sheamus, and then Alberto Del Rio got a concussion, and it's like, oh shit, let's go with plan... Yeah, so uh, like plan H, last second, Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, I, I mean, and this was a good match. Dolph Ziggler is quite possibly one of the best guys they've that they've never pulled the trigger on. Yes, he's had the United States Championship, but I, I really do feel he, 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 he could, he, uh, he is more than welcome in the main event scene. And I really wish more people would see that. I mean, would you, did you really expect that anybody to be saying that about the guy who is part of the Spirit Squad? No, I never expected him to get this far. I do think, I don't know if he's still quite ready to, to main event yet for a couple of reasons. First of all, I don't think a lot of the crowd buys him as a serious threat to some of the top guys. Now, not this crowd here at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, because they fucking loved him. They were cheering the hell out of him, and the announcers sounded downright embarrassed to be trying to pretend to say... They did that thing where on commentary where they're just ignoring reality, where the crowd's no, going, let's go that. Ziggler, and the... And Lawler's like, they're cheering for Seamus! <laughs> you know, I, I know Cole operates in his own little world 100% of the time. Where Yeah, where, where if Lawler just blatantly lies about something like that, it means Vince or someone is in his headset telling him to say that. Uh, Lawler's going, you better not acknowledge these cheers, Lawler. <laughs> I liked it better when, triple, when uh, Paul's in charge, Vince. They're cheering for Seamus! <laughs> but also just Ziggler sometimes seems like when he, when it was his time to go on offense for an extended period of time, he kind of felt like he ran out of shit to do. He kept going back to chin locks and sleeper holds a lot. So the Randy Orton style of rest of healing. Yeah, and it's, I don't know if it was a bad night, but his punches were looking Kind of lame at times. Not as bad as Brodus Clay's did. Wow, those are awful. But uh, just that, and I noticed he was reusing moves a lot. Like the big drop kick to the face, he did it twice. Big jumping DDT, he did that twice. Seemed like he just has a little... He's so used to working the shorter matches where it's mostly him getting the shit kicked out of him and taking these huge bumps. He's not used to filling up time when it's time for him to go on offense. Which, he can learn that, and I don't think it'd be that hard for him to learn. I just don't think he's quite there yet. Right, right, right. I don't know. It's it's kind of frustrating with Ziggler, though, because like on occasion, he gets to the main event spot, but then they just seem to forget about him after it afterwards. 
Yeah, and also he is a guy with a cowardly gimmick who was in the Spirit Squad, who uh, takes the most ridiculous. I just got shot in the face bumps, and his name's Dolph Ziggler. So it's amazing he got this far. That's that's that too. Um. So, anyways, in case you guys didn't know, Sheamus wins with the broke kick, which they're really trying to you know put over as the end all be all um move of Sheamus. Yeah. Because Sheamus has, like, 37 different finishers. Yeah, that, I mean, he's got the white noise, he's got the white power, he's got the white chocolate. Yeah. He, whoa, 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 They actually let him have a move called white power? No. no it's no. called the crusty kryptonite crunch. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, they've got... They've got Get it? So Get it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, they Oh god! Got him with so many freaking moves. It's like, what is he? What? What? What big power move from Japan is he gonna pull out next? Is he gonna pull off a burning hammer? He already does the Yakuza kick, the Emerald Fusion, and what's the other one? Um. Oh god, I think. Well, right now he's doing... there. Right now, see, WWE goes in like these cycles where at different times they'll have like. Six different guys who all do nearly identical finishers. Like, there was a time back at, about ten years ago where half the roster was doing a neckbreaker of some sort as a finish. Now it's guys doing moves where they start with the person as a fireman's carry and somehow slam them to the ground in a slightly different fashion than the other 14 people who <laughs> have start with a fireman's carry into a slam. Right, because... And that, got- yeah, and Sheamus' other move is one of those. Yeah, well, well, like I said, Sheamus wins with a broke kick. Okay, good, I don't... And and then after that match, I'm like, huh, how do we cool this? Oh, we'll go backstage with Vince McMahon and John Laronitis. Yeah, not one of John's best nights on the mic here. Yeah. Well... Uh, Vince's just hand signal to just keep him from coming into his dressing room was kind of funny. It was, it was. And... and, and Really, I mean, okay, we know what happened on Monday night. We know the new stipulation is if John, uh, uh, John is getting fired tonight. Will it be Laronitis? Will it be... <laughs> I couldn't even put it Come on! Keep your professionalism. All right. Is it going to be uh, Cena? Uh, we'll find out at the end of the night because now we've got a tuxedo match. Yeah. Well... This is honestly something I don't think we've seen in WWE for a while. No. I've seen worse tuxedo matches, I'll put it that way. You know what? I like this match. because yeah. it, it, And they name-dropped a lot of those worst tuxedo matches on commentary during this one. I mean, okay, <laughs> it's it's Santino Morello versus Ricardo Rodriguez. Yeah. I'm Ricardo, not... Ricardo needs to find more than one facial expression for when he's unhappy, but other than that, he's awesome. Yeah, it's like, okay... I'm I'm not unhappy. They're doing a tuxedo match, so the two comedy guys are doing a comedy spot. Hmm. And it it's they don't drag it out. It's short. I mean, like it starts out with like you know Rod, Ricardo rips Santino's jacket, and Santino's like, "This is my only a tuxedo." I don't own another one. I'm disappointed he didn't come out in a tuxedo shirt. Yeah, it was kind of. Mm. I mean, the or crowd... actually, actually, I I can't believe I actually have a ch- a chance to mention this. But do you know that there exists an item called the fuck zito? What? It is a jumpsuit. It's it's a full body jumpsuit that when you're wearing it looks like an actual tuxedo, and it just zippers up. And buttons, and it looks like you're wearing a tuxedo. Uh huh. That is actually what it's called. I I would have thought Santino would have gone with that at least. Well, it's got to be that breakaway. And by the way, the crowd shat all over this match. Big boring gent. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um. Of course, Santino wins. Well, I don't know. This probably isn't the kind of match you put on a pay per view. Yeah. The, the, that that was probably. Yeah. The, if these two were actually going for the United States title in a regular match. Well, it's Chimera versus Santino Morella. This is one of the first of several segments on this show that felt like filler. Yeah. It's just like, uh, here's a Raw that you paid 50 bucks to watch. Congratulations! 
Now you know how t- uh, how you how a TNA audience feels. <laughs> That's not a good thing. Um, like yeah. I said, Santino w- gets the win with the Cobra after stripping Ricardo. No, he gets the win with the lower Cobra. That is, he had one on his foot, one of the a Cobra sock after Ricardo threw away the earlier one. Oh. Oh. So he kicked him in the face with that. That was smart of him. Almost a, okay. No, I can't stop. Well, the, the way he sold it though was hilarious. Like Ricardo is yanking his sock off, and it's like if you're if you're watching and you know what's coming, it's like oh there it is. But it's like he does that, and Ricardo like turns to throw the sock out of the ring, and behind him Santino lifts his leg high into the air. I mean, his big toe was somehow like five feet off of the mat. And it's like he's holding up Excalibur. And the crowd actually sees it and gets it right away and pops yeah, back Yeah, the crowd back into this match, which is... It, the, some, some of the cities that they do pay-per-views in, the crowd is, like, schizophrenic. Yeah, and this one had its moments. I mean, right, but... A- yeah. After this, they die for about the next hour. Mm. After the next match, anyway. Well, next up, we have another backstage segment. And, guys, it's time for Crazy AJ. Yay. You know, I... It reminds me of my ex-girlfriends, except skinnier. And shorter. And geekier. And You know, AJ reminds me of a lot of things. But, good lord, she is playing some form of game. I don't know what it is. I honestly cannot tell you what type of game she is playing. But she she is manipulating all three of these guys in this uh, in this uh, main event. Yeah. Oh, well, she lived in the land of Westeros, and she would win the Game of Thrones, become the queen, have all <laughs> of her enemies' heads upon spikes within a yeah, week and a half. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're probably fucking right. Oh, we are such nerds. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it's, um, it's amazing. And this is the thing. She's not healed. She, oh, not I yet. She's some form of weird Harley Quinn-esque crazy thing. And no, like, not even Harley Quinn. She's the mastermind of this whole goddamn thing. Yeah, you're pretty much right. Well, some, anyway. but you know what? Like Sam Punk. I dig, I dig the crazy AJ. Shut up. Well, the thing is, is that uh, she said it like a while back on Raw. She likes, she likes having guys pay attention to her. That's what all of this is about. Is that she will do anything for attention. Mm. So she may not be a heel, but I think they will. She may not be a real heel right now, but I think she might be heading in that direction eventually. When people finally start realizing that, yes, she's just a manipulative bitch. I don't care if she's a face or a heel. She's damn entertaining to watch. Oh, yeah, as long as she remains cute as a button and twice as crazy, I'm happy. (laughs) (laughs) Well, ladies and gentlemen, there we go. So next up, we've got the Intercontinental Championship, Christian versus Cody Rhodes. Yeah, this began the trend of the crowd just not giving much of a fuck. And then realizing, oh, this is a really good match. They do have a good match. I mean, it's it's one of those Christian matches where, like, it's a counter palooza. Like, everything is a counter to a counter of a counter. I mean, it's it breaks the counter counter. No, yeah, oh, I see what you ways you can use that word. Yeah. Oh, I need to go get my drink off the counter. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I think we've covered all of them now. Yeah, I um, but, and I mean, this is just a, a good, solid back and forth match. Both guys bumping their ass out. Christian, Christian was taking some nasty fucking bumps out there, especially. Well, you know what? I'm I'm really, really loving Cody Rhodes right now. More so than I've actually liked Cody Rhodes to begin with. I mean, he play, the the guy actually goes to his dad the American dream and asks him how he can improve and then goes and just incorporates it into what he's doing. 
I mean, yeah, and there's a lot of old school NWA influence in this guy. If you right. watch, it's like there's a lot of Tully Blanchard stuff that he's doing out there. There's some Arn Anderson ish stuff out there he's doing. I mean, there's, that kind a of little, thing. there's even a little hardcore Holly. And <laughs> who was the last person to ever honor hardcore Holly? Yeah. Or even, well, they did team together when Cody first got his break in the company. Yeah, when he was. C A W D Rhodes, because he was a he looked like a mm. yeah I get it. Anyways, um, great match. I, I I thought it was it was I mean it was solid. The crowd gets into it at the end, which was you know what we wanted, and then Christian connects with the spear. Hmm. And I okay. guess Cody's going back to Kenya. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, we were talking about this last night. The reason that Cody hasn't really been on TV these past couple of weeks is because WWE has been having him promote shows in Kenya. Really? Interesting choice. I know. Because when you think the heart of Africa, you think the son of the American dream. I know I do. Ah. Like, come on, you, like, you don't... Like you, you've you've got twenty seven different black guys on NXT who never get onto Raw. They could use a little bit of a job, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, speaking of uh, uh, tw- uh, part of those twenty six black guys on NXT, let's have a number one contendership also, in the WWE Tag Team Championships. Also, speaking of not giving a shit. <laughs> yeah, Our this call quality stops. <laughs> yeah. Um, I- I'm sorry. Okay, we've got Primo Epi- and Epico versus Tyson Kidd and Justin Gabriel versus the primetime players, Pettis O'Neill and Darren Young, versus the Usos. Raise your hand if you give a shit about any of those people. The crowd kind of like the Usos. They cared nothing about anybody else. And that well, that's because the Usos are the only ones with any sense of personality. And how yeah. sad is that? <laughs> yeah. I, I, and, and, I mean, okay, Titus O'Neil and, and Darren Young have been trying, oh, so trying to get themselves over as the heel tag team, and all they are are a pair of narcissistic idiots. All I can do is stare at Darren Young's amazing thighs. Have you ever really looked at those things? They're Uh-oh. huge. Yeah, say I have. They're big around as my torrent. Look at his fucking thighs the next time those guys in the ring. They are just gargantuan. Jingus, you want to tell us something about yourself? Yeah, I, I'm distracted by disproportionate body parts. <laughs> it's <laughs> unreal. Oh, God. <laughs> some, now, don't get me wrong. This match had some good spots. And some good stories. And, by the way, the only reason Abraham Washington is out here, apparently he's managing the the, uh, the uh, Primo and Epico. Yeah, he's A.W. Yeah, A.W. I don't fucking care. Because yeah, and then he turned on them at the end. Yeah, uh, and for what, really? what reason? And it was one of those, like, Russo kind of heel turns where, like, somebody just magically knows that the finish isn't going to happen before they turn 15 minutes into the match. It was just... It's like, you know, there was 27 other near falls earlier, but I'm not going to interfere until this one. Yeah, it was the, like, the... I mean, I was looking at this heel turn, and I was like... I was looking at this as AW cost Epico and... Primo, the, uh, the, the the number one contendership, and joins up with the primetime players. I'm looking at this and I'm going, the fuck just happened here? Mm. And this was like, because I was just watching some shit on YouTube and I came across a segment from a couple years back where Nexus beat the fuck out of Bret Hart. And in that, Justin Gabriel looked like a star. At the moment where, like, he he gets up on the top rope to do the 450 on Brett, and the other at Nexus are all in a line in the ring, like, posing. And he does that thing where he gives that weird, creepy look from side to side across the entire arena where he's taking his time before the 450. 
It's just like, this guy's really going to become something. And look what they've done with him. They've somehow made everybody lose whatever fucks they ever gave about yeah, him. Yeah, now Justin Gabriel, Gabriel is the Cape Town werewolf. What? What? There's okay, not... he does kind of look like every werewolf on True Blood, but still. But the, here's another thing. There are no wolves in Cape Town! Yeah, don't they have lions there? Yeah, if they have lions, there's also no wolves on his fucking ring gear. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, it's... Like I said, the primetime players, Darren Young and Titus O'Neil, are your new tag team champions because R-Truth has a broken foot. Yeah. Also, is AW turned on them to? Is this a race war thing? Because the black guy turned I don't on the next to join with the other black guy. I still have no idea who Abraham Washington is, despite the fact that you guys have. <laughs> who the fuck is Serge? Ex- despite the fact that. Yeah, like, this is kind of the first time uh, I've ever heard of the guy. Time. <laughs> yeah, apparently he joined Epico and Primo like five minutes before the show started. No, no, no. Actually, uh, and, and I hate to say this, he joined up with Epico and Primo after they lost the tag team championship to um, uh, Kofi and our truth no, Oh, that's right. And then uh, Epico and Primo and Abraham Washington and Rose all just kind of disappeared. I remember, the one thing I do remember is that one time they were cutting a promo backstage and then they just cut right before the promo start. Like they started showing the pro, they show five seconds of the promo, and then they cut away to something else. Which is just how much. Uh, um, I don't really fucking care because uh, after the match, by the way, Neil and Young beat down Epico and Primo. It's like, when's Carlito coming back? <laughs> if ever? Never. I I I, I you know. If I may be allowed to quote King Lear for a moment, Go ahead. I've seen two. Never, 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 never. Then what's the point for Bound for Glory? I don't know Wait, what that what? Came from either. <laughs> mm. anyways, we're all stalling like hell because we don't want to talk about the next segment. Uh, oh God! Triple H. And I skipped the fuck out of this, so someone else can recap it. All right, uh, Triple H is coming out to talk, because that's what we paid $50 for. Yeah. And he basically just comes out to talk about Brock Lesnar, and he doesn't like that Brock Lesnar broke his arm a couple months ago, and he wants to kick his ass. Odds of that happening, I'd say uh, 30% with the way uh, Brock's relationship is with WWE right now. Brock Lesnar, (laughs) my God. God, how stupid can you be? And th- this is the guy that they've been toting. Oh, oh, he's a he's a great businessman. Why would you do? Why would why would you go to an un? Uh, you wouldn't tell the WWE you know, Hey, to kind of build up the, the storyline, I'm going to go appear at a UFC event. Is that okay? Cool. Instead, it's well, I'm just going to fucking go. I don't get that. This guy. This was such a mess, they had to rehire Paul Heyman just to salvage it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Paul, you're greatly experienced at taking fucking incoherent storylines and trying to do something to duct tape them together into sensical stuff. Do your magic. Yeah, that's basically what Paul Heyman has kind of done. But Triple H, the the, the gist of this promo promo is, I want to fuck you, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, that I've heard if you take this exact promo word for word and just a, exchange the word fight for the word fuck every time it's used, that it becomes the greatest thing of all time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Triple H is challenging Brock Lesnar to, to, for, one, for a one-on-one match at SummerSlam because why not? Yeah. And... Um, because every hot new act that comes, or not new, but every hot unusual act that comes through recently has to wrestle Triple H. Because like last year it was Punk, now it's Brock. He only doesn't didn't wrestle Rock because they don't like each other. Well, and Rock wouldn't well, have fucking done it. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing: Rocky would have would have probably wor- worked with Triple H and done the job and done the job because that's the type of guy he is. But Brock. I don't know. He's just 
way too much of a prima donna right now. Yeah, I mean, Brock probably likes Cena. They came up together at around the same time. Well, they were training but, together in OVW forever. They broke in around the same time. And also, Brock Lesnar kind of made Cena. Yeah, they did have a, a little mini feud together there in SmackDown. Which yeah, that, that was Cena's face turn, wasn't it? That was, that no, was. that was Cena's... He, that was Cena's turn from having no character to... Hi, I'm the doctor of thugonomics. How you doing? Yeah. It's in that period where Cena started feuding with like a bunch of guys who were way further up the card than him and never actually winning any matches, but still getting noticed and kind of getting over. He did beat Chris Jericho. Yeah, but I mean, he was like feuding yeah. with Brock and losing and losing and feuding with Taker and, Brock, and losing and losing. <laughs> Brock busted his knee and so John Cena did the famous... You got the F5, I got the FU, yeah, yeah, yada, yada, yada. But anyways, this this match I don't want to see because I don't care about Brock Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. The, the only reason I want to see it is because I'm curious what they're going to do with it. Exactly. And I I love Brock when he's here and shows up and decides he wants to work. That match with Cena was fucking yeah. awesome. They're going to job oh. Brock to Triple H if, that's, if this actually happens. Yeah. And I don't uh, think Brock wants that. I think he wants at least one win in this run. I know, I but really, I think WWE is actually looking... I mean, with all the shit he's done, they might actually be looking for some way to say he breached his contract. They, they, And you know what? Here's the thing. They might have it with this UFC appearance. And yeah. all him talking to Dana White about coming back to UFC. Brock Lesnar can't do UFC anymore. He'll die. I, I don't know why he would even be considering going back to the UFC. I, I would think it wouldn't be to fight, or at least I would hope, just considering that, you know, I, I saw the last fight and Brock was didn't look like Brock did pre, you know, massive surgery on his intestines. Oh, I've, I've seen, I saw Brock Lesnar fight a couple times. The dude was a legit powerhouse, and yeah. really, really brought some excitement to uh, to UFC. But now, and he still is, but it, he's like at best eighty seventy five percent of what he used to be. Yeah, pretty. and these guys are all so good at this top level of fighting that like half a percent means winning or losing a fight. <laughs> so let's get off UFC and Triple H yeah. and wanting Brock Lesnar's dick in his ass. Yeah, thanks, Triple H. You're, you're so awesome and captivating in your promos. We talked about an entirely different industry. Well done. <laughs> hey, it's AK hey, talking to her ex-boyfriend, Daniel Bryan. Again, more of this, uh, more of this manipulation. More of this. I'm the center of attention. And um, I know you guys have seen it. There is a gif floating around the uh, the internet of AJ back when she was in F FCW where she gets slapped and then gets this really creepy but oh-so-adorable grin on her face. This girl was made for this role. That's domestic abuse, and I'll take it. Well, it was, it was from another female, so... Lesbianism! <laughs> hey, diva's time. And... Hold on a second. Hey, Jingus. Hmm? It didn't end in a roll-up. I actually like this match. I thought it, it was... They told a really good story out there. Well, mm -hmm. here's the thing. Layla is definitely back. I am so glad Layla is back because... Yeah, I... What, did she used to ever be good? Because when she was with Lake, well, I didn't remember them being anything worth talking about, but she was really good here. No, the problem there was she hitched her wagon to Michelle McCool and, uh... Everyone yeah, just that kind of forgot. Everyone just kind of forgot. Oh, she's actually good. Layla has. I, I mean, okay, she started off as you know one of the uh, extreme expose dancers, but when mm. when they sat her down and said, "Hey, do you want to be a wrestler?" She was like, "Yeah," and it's just been amazing. Now, granted, that year off she took for the knee injury. 
probably helped her out because she's been she's been just phenomenal since she's been back. And um, the way the way she I mean the I mean okay it's with Beth Phoenix. When has Beth Phoenix had a bad match? Oh, lots with various of the divas. <laughs> you mean with Kelly Kelly? Because that's all they yeah, said. That, do you? This woman has wrestled Bella Twins and Rosa Mendez, and still pulled out a pretty damn decent match. No, well, she's done what she could, but there's only so much polishing you can do on that turd. Yeah, mm. but this, this was actually a damn decent um, Divas match, and I really, really wish John Laronitis was was not looking for new Divas out of uh, out of swimsuit belly. And did you notice that they took their time? Yeah. They're like, huh, we've actually got ten minutes. Let's not rush everything like r- sprinting maniacs like we have to do in our 90 second long matches on Raw. Or SmackDown. Whichever show, th- does it matter anymore? No, it There's doesn't. There's an extension. I mean, there was some, I mean, my favorite spot, of course, was the uh, press slam into the DDT. Yeah, that was cool. And I want a gif of the dance that Layla did when she stole the tiara. I don't know what the fuck that was, but I found it entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's. I mean, okay, granted, I was liking the Divas of Doom if it had gone somewhere. It was like the more intense version of of Lay Cool, but it went nowhere. So Beth Phoenix's credibility mm. kind of went down the crap. <laughs> Yeah, and then the farting gimmick kind of killed Natalia. But yeah, she's it's gonna be a long time if she's ever gonna get back over again, which I doubt. Well, anyways, yeah. Layla wins with the uh, with her with her neck breaker, and um, more AJ, yay! yay! And this is easily the weirdest part of the. De- of the night because yeah. she because she goes she goes to find Kane and do the same thing that uh, she did to CM Punk and Ooh. Daniel Bryan except Naturally, she goes to leave Kane is in a dark basement no oh, of course but she goes to leave and Kane is like oh we ain't done here and pulls her back and then just sticks his tongue down her throat you know yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it here AJ and Kane are totally my OTP right now. <laughs> I'm shipping the fuck out of that. I am so hopeful. Dude, Kane always works so well when they just put him together with a chick who's not all there. Well, okay. And when they did it with Tori back in the day in like late 99, it was awesome. And then Lita, say what you want about Lita. It, the Kane-Lita thing, when Lita turned heel, worked. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Lita wasn't healed when she was with Kane, though, was she? She actually... No, it's act- It's when they did the thing with Edge before Matt Hardy came back. Yeah, so, um, yeah. the the Kane... Uh, the Lita turning heel happened when she was with Kane, and then Matt came back and... Yeah, that happened. <laughs> well, just, just, there are little parts. The one I'll always remember is... Uh, after Lita left the company, you know, they brought her back for little one shots here and there a few times just for like the, you know, 9,000th episode of Raw or whatever. And one time they did a deal where she was there and she just ran into Kane backstage. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they were both, they both acted like both of them were so nervous at seeing each other again and it was so awkward. <laughs> they started like trying to talk about movies and the weather and it just died. <laughs> it was the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. Okay, and say what you will about Kane's um Kane's acting skills. The dude actually has the chops to pull off a comedic role or to pull off a fucking monstrous role. I love seeing No Evil. I, it's a bad horror movie, but it's a, yeah. one of those bad horror movies that you that I enjoy watching. Well, the second best movie WWE's ever managed to crap out, which ain't saying much, but... That's true, but, yeah, I mean, again, AJ, I dig crazy chicks. I'm here in Virginia. Come on down. It's only a four-hour drive. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Kane is... It, not his acting skills isn't the problem. It's that it, he's a magnet for 
bad writing, and not just bad writing, but sometimes the worst writing. Yeah, well, <laughs> don't yeah. know why he gets more wrestle crap foisted off onto him, and he's such a company guy. He's just like, yeah, boss, I'll make it work. Yeah. Now here's another thing that's uh, you know interesting. Remember when Kane was feuding with Randy Orton? I know we all want to forget that. We all want to forget that. Remember his reasonings was because he shook Randy's hand before he went out on injury, that humanized him. Now he's making out with an unstable uh, with the unstable chick. Well, respect to a dude is different from lust from a chick. I mean, hmm. No, I guess so. Anyway, Sin Cara versus Honeycomb. Why is this I'm happening? This on pay per view. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, why does Hunico like, still work here? I mean, I like Hunico a lot. He seems like the lost Guerrero at times, but what the fuck? You know, they had quite possibly the best Sin Cara mask I've ever seen Sin- with Sin Cara and Negro, and I don't want to find one of those masks. Hey. But. Could you do you remember when Sin Cara first debuted and we're like, wow, this guy could really fucking be something. Those were the days, huh? Well, yeah. Part of the problem is the WWE has this obsession with the fact that they say Sin Cara must wrestle under these lights. He's yeah. Well, a- you forget he's Triple H's pet project, so right. yeah, he's gonna yeah, get. And now they, they they're still doing the blue lights, even though now he's wearing red gear. Here's another thing. He's got. He's got mesh eye holes in his mask. Yeah, so this guy's already half blind. Let's lower the lights down. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm going to say this. A lot of the of the um, Sin Cara botches that we see is because he can't see. Then again, it's the exact same kind of eye holes he used when he was in Mexico as Mystico, so you'd think he'd be used to it. Well, the problem, I, 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 I need to track down a, a Mystico match, but I don't think they had the lights turned way down low. No, they didn't change the lights, but the, they're it, still it, bright enough that the cameras are clearly catching everything. I mean, you could see. I, I don't think it could be a factor. I don't think it's the factor. No, I don't think it's. I'm just not the factor. Yeah, I'm just saying there. There's a ton of factors, but and again, this match. Yeah, meh, 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 meh. At least these two can kind of work together. Yeah, I mean, this was too long to be a raw sprint, too short to be a pay per view match. Pointless. No, I, there was no storyline at all here, was there? Other than, well, we want Sin Cara on a pay per view, and oh shit, this is the only guy he has a good matches with. Well, here, well, the the story is the story that we've seen all the time. Honeyco hates Sin Cara. Mm. That's it. That's the only reason he, he this guy, and he's still coming out on that fucking fight. Mm. Oh well, it happened. It <laughs> wasted five minutes of our time. It was like watching Frankenstein on Conan and Brian for a week. But anyway. Now we have the W. Ah, god damn it, Cena's main event. Yeah, yeah that's never going to change until he retires. Or dies. Sadly. Which, did, I don't know. I'd like, I, I wish they would do some surveys to find out, like, how many of the people who bought this show actually bought it because they gave a fuck about Cena versus Big Show. I can't even imagine that Cena is all that happy that he always is in the main event. Oh, he gets paid more for so it, so I'm well, sure. Okay, yeah, good point. <laughs> oh, hold on a second. Yeah, he gets paid more for it, but you got to remember, Cena is one of those guys who will put who who wants to put over other people, but creative and management is like, no, 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 no. We got to keep selling your merch, and he's like, well. Fuck me. Anyways, uh, we'll talk about Cena. I just don't understand why he always has to get the main event, because... Let's be perfectly fucking honest. In the grand scheme of things, it probably doesn't matter that much what order the matches go in. Not ultimately. It looks bad. But if you bought the entire fucking pay-per-view, you're going to sit there and you're going to watch every second that you paid for. Yeah, because it's expensive. It just looks really shitty. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. 
that's part of the reason why I hate seeing anything but a championship match go on last in any company. Uh, anyway. Yeah. But we anyway, but this is uh, second or third from the top, and it is a championship match, three-way, Punk versus Brian versus Kane, and uh, match of the night, easily, good match. Not the yeah. best that Punk and Brian will ever have, but... but the, the problem is, they have Kane in, in with them. And Punk and Brian by themselves are just phenomenal. If you throw in AJ Styles, it's all of a sudden it, it becomes a masterpiece. You throw in Samoa Joe when he gets a, a when he when he gives a fuck, and um, well, floods start happening from every spark in the world. But Iron Bite, yeah, quit. Just stop. Okay. <laughs> You're just gonna make everyone sad. <laughs> Yeah, let's talk about the match. This match and, was... <coughs> excuse me. Good. It was your typical good main event championship three-way match in the WWE, basically. Right. Except like with uh, Punk and Brian are good at adding those little touches that a lot of guys either can't or won't. There, there was one thing early on where Kane's on his knees and Punk and Brian are taking turns kicking him. So, yeah. Which was kind of hilarious and cool. This is actually a spot from uh, which Brian is familiar with because the first time I ever saw it was the main event of the first Ring of Honor show with Brian Danielson, Loki, and uh, who was the third guy? If you say uh, Christopher Daniels ah. in a three way. Oh. And uh, AJ, I mean, not AJ, what the fuck am I saying? Uh, Danielson and Loki did that spot on Daniels, who was not happy at getting kicked a lot. <laughs> yeah, you got to imagine that. Um, and of course, with Loki, he was getting kicked a fuck of a lot harder than Kane was here. Old, so. old dog, but <laughs> you, you got to imagine that that Brian and Punk sit in the back, planning out their matches, going. So you remember that spot we did, and, and yeah, on, on that one. Mark and I did the way mid south. I think we were in Kentucky somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you want to do that spot. Okay. Should we tell Glenn? Yeah, let's tell him. Hey, Glenn, get over here. <laughs> what? We're planning out this match. You guys plan? Don't you? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Be like, I, you, I used to. That? <laughs> I, used I mean, to. they plan whenever I have to be set on fire, but other than that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, a, a, lot of, a lot of what makes the Brian Punk matches awesome to watch is you can tell that they sit backstage through most of the show together working out spots and actually planning the match so they can do very little calling during the match itself. Which and, can be a double-edged sword. Yeah, it can be a double-edged sword, but I'm talking to uh, Daniel Bryan and Sam Punk. Yeah. They're going to be able to do it well. And Iron Bite has a fight with his microphone. Apparently. Um, yeah, and meanwhile, I'll point out, there were no rear chin locks and no shoulders getting thrown into the post spots in this match. So okay. thank you for that, guys. Because no. for the rest of this show, wow, there was a lot of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah there's two matches. Uh, anyway, but We could go on forever talking about all the great spots yeah. in this match. So we will. Um... <laughs> Daniel Bryan doing the double missile drop kick spot again to Punk and Kane. It's like, wow! And then that's a hard bump to take, by the way, because you're is. leaping straight forward, kind of basic, almost guaranteed to land on your lower back and a little bit on your tailbone. That's a rough fucking bump to take, but he was enthusiastic about it. Yeah, um, and then doing, then doing. Well, let me alternate you. I kick you, then I kick you, then I kick you, yeah. then I kick you. <laughs> then he just kicked Punk and Kane forever. Yeah, that's like <laughs> still doing it right now. And he, and he, and and Kane basically was in, in in this match to just take 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 bumps. But when when he started doing his spots, you know the flying uh, the flying forearm from the top rope. It, uh, and and all all you know all the other good Kane spots, it it actually added to the match. It added to this three way, which was good. But again, yeah, Kane is basically K 
Kane's Kane to an extent is like a heavier version of Sting back in the nineties. Kane a, a Kane match is going to be exactly as good as his opponent is. Right. I mean, he doesn't need to be carried, but he's not a carrier. No, no, it's it's he's he's a guy who will, you know, take take he will make you look like a million bucks, and uh, he made them, um, he made them, you know. He made them. He made Brian Punk uh, look like a million bucks. Now, will this be the end of Kane in this main event feud? Oh no, no. Because it depends on what they're doing with the AJ thing. Yeah, well, let, let's get into that because the finish is uh, uh, Kane choke slams Punk, but only gets a two count. So he sets him up for the tombstone, um, but Punk manages to uh, slide out and uh, get to the apron. AJ runs out, jumps on the apron. Punk throws Kane into her, knocks her out cold, gets him up for the GTS, Punk retains. She went flying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she did. She went, wah! If you remember that time that Lillian Garcia accidentally got knocked off the apron. By when, Charlie Haas. Oh, yeah, yeah, when Charlie Haas was running the ropes. It kind of looked like that. It did, it did, it did. But <laughs> at the end, when he, as he's celebrating... AJ is like, oh, I'm back. Hi, punk. Hi, chick magnet. Yeah, Kane picks her up and, like, carries her, like, and he thinks she's a limp, unconscious corpse to the back. And she's like, oh, my God, I'm hurt so bad. And then she's looking over Kane's shoulder where he can't see. And just giving this crazy She eye. looks so pleased with her. She's <laughs> like, oh, fuck yes. All of my plans, they are coming together perfectly. I don't know where where she's going with it. I honestly don't. But god damn. Back you know it. what? It's a great ride, though. You know what? As dumb as it sounds, I think my theory is that she wants a WWE title for herself. <laughs> you know, that... You know I know that that could probably never happen. The most glorious happen. fucking thing. I know Does that 87 can... pounds count as heavyweight? Well, no, it's not the heavyweight title. There, it's there that the WWE title does not say heavyweight anywhere in it. There's not. I don't even think there's a stipulation that says a woman can't hold it. They just never book. It is that. the spinny weight belt. <laughs> I, oh God! You know, see, uh, obviously there's no way in hell they'd actually put the belt on a on a woman because. Yeah. We yeah. Know. We know. There's <laughs> reasons. You know. But they're kind of shitty, but but still. Yeah. Um, but now all I can think is that real, she's gonna end up dating. Just I'm trying. To just imagine the belt going on Kane. Because yes, I'm sticking to my ship. God damn it! <laughs> I could just see her wearing it. Like he has the belt, but yeah. she always has it on her. It's just like it's and mine. It's just like, shiny. Honey, <laughs> can I wear it? And she just stares at him, and he's like, "Yes, ma'am." And he's like carrying her purse. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I, I, I do like to I do I do sometimes like to do this, but uh, AJ just wearing the belt and nothing else. She could actually wear it as a dress. Well, no, <laughs> <laughs> but it wouldn't make a half bad sash. No, it would be better than fucking uh, Madison Rain's dumbass. Could probably pull off some really tasteful nudes with just that belt. It's actually big enough. Mm. So God damn it, Iron Bite! <laughs> oh, I know you love me. Na, 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 na. <laughs> anyway, our next match we have Rhino back. Ryb- I mean, we Ryb- have Ryb- 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 I mean, we got Ryb- <laughs> I mean, we got Roy back. I mean, we got Ryback. Ryback does a thing. Move. Let's move on to the main event. I don't Ryb- care. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna. I'm, I just want to say I, I, passing. Yes, Ryback. I will feed you more. Come over here. I have Twinkies. I'm God. sorry, that's all I do with with Ryback now. Ryback does a thing because it's the same thing every time. Yeah, and it's not okay. And I've heard people going, oh, well, he mixes it up. Oh, he does. No, he doesn't. No, he really doesn't. <laughs> he slams <laughs> one. moves he uses? <laughs> he, he, he slams one jobber into he, he He no-sells the offense. He slams one jobber into the other. He blat, He kills the. Uh, he kills both jobbers dead. And then he hits them. But then he hits them with uh, his, his finisher simultaneously. Yes, putting two men on your shoulders is impressive. Except when you do it, thirty-seven thousand. Yeah, yeah, it was really cool the first time. 
I think and now it's getting old. Getting, and now it's getting old. I think it'd be getting over easier if they weren't pushing him so hard. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but I think the audience, especially with the Goldberg chant every week, is realizing, okay, they're trying to make this guy into a monster, and we've seen this so many times that we don't buy it anymore. Yeah. The pro- the thing is, is that it was a good idea. They're just dragging yeah. it out too long. They might as well start chanting crimson, crimson. <laughs> no, it, it's, I've laughed like, so hard. But... I, I would love to see crimson versus Ryback. If only, <laughs> if only to hope with it, uh, 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 to hope with hands akimbo that God would strike them both down dead. Every <laughs> single time to go to a double count out. <laughs> the thing oh, is, though. God. I'm always going to end up being stuck on two minds of this. On one hand, they really should have switched him over to, you know, actual wrestlers from WWE by now. They yeah. did on the for other a hand, while, like, but then they were two like... Two jobbers mm, got no. to be on a pay-per-view, and it's just like, those two guys are so fucking lucky, and I'm so happy for them. Because that had to have been fucking awesome. Uh, well, here's another thing. I, once again, the WWE looks out on the street you know, with a sign sa- saying "Need two jobbers to s- to be squashed." Inquire within, and then just takes the the first two random guys who have any form of of wrestling training, and says, "Hey, you want a pay per view check? Here you go." Mm. And it's just it's I, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, and why are complete no name jobbers in the semi main event of a pay per view? I don't know. Look, Ryback does a thing. Move on. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. <laughs> Main event. Talk uh, about, uh, we've talked longer than the God. match lasted. Yeah, basically. Probably. John- Main event. John Cena versus Big Show cage match. This sucked. This is it- the worst match these guys have ever had together. And that's saying a lot because these two have had damn decent matches. Um, I mean, Show was trying, but Cena wasn't he looked like he was on autopilot he was out there practically acting like it was the raw dark match half the time yeah i mean and, and like 90 i was actually looking forward match, to this like 90 percent of the match was cena down selling for people who say that he never sells watch this you'll love it <laughs> and then like 80 percent of his offense was trying to run away out of the cage which was smart because yeah way they did it. It made him look like a coward. This wasn't like, ha ha, I fooled you. This was, oh my god, I gotta go. I'm actually gonna go back to um, before WrestleMania when Daniel Bryan was hot as fucking shit as the World Heavyweight Champion and he had a cage match with Big Show and Mark Henry and the very first thing, um, when the bell rings, Dave O'Brien tries to get the fuck out of there. Yeah. He's, he's like, fuck Ill. you, I'm out. And... Cena's not supposed to do that. Cena's yeah. supposed to stand and fight. Cena's supposed to... I'm Cena. I'm... I'm the hero of kids worldwide. I will stand up to the bullies and be a star. And in this mm. match, he was more like, Run away! <laughs> I I don't understand this mat this match. I really don't. Big Show walked the top rope and dropped an elbow off of it. It was bizarre. It was like it was like someone told Show. It's like hey Show, make it count. And he was like oh, okay. And then somebody went the, that same person with the Cena and went Cena, you can do whatever the fuck you want. We don't care. Oh <laughs> sweet it night off. Doesn't oh. count. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, and, uh, there was a shitload of overbooking and interference. Oh God! And everyone know. interfered. It's it amazing was how you put a ref bump in a fucking cage match, but they managed it. Uh, and, and okay, so we hit, we get a we get a ref bump after Laronitis is like uh, uh, Laronitis and Vince are or go head to head during this and Lord I just even you know knocks Vince out. Is there a ref bump in a cage match? And there's a ref bump. Does, the ref doesn't do anything except ring the bell when someone wins. He can't I, disqualify anyone. Well, well here's the thing. The there is the ref inside the cage is there to count the pinfall or submission. Because as we all know, you can win 
in a cage match by pinfall or submission and escaping the cage. So we get the ref bump, and this brings and, and as Cena is trying to crawl out of the cage, Laronidas and Vince wrestle over the door. Finally, Laronidas wins, slams it into Cena's head, and this brings out the almost the entire locker room. First comes out Brodus Clay to stop Show from getting out. Then comes yeah. Santino. Brodus no longer remembering that he had an injured leg earlier that night. Well, he iced it down. <laughs> uh, then comes out. He got better. <laughs> yeah, he got better. Then comes out Santino Morella and Alex fucking Riley. I thought I saw cobwebs on him for where he'd been stored in the company warehouse. Yeah. Then comes out Zack Ryder, because the crowd had been chanting all night, we want Ryder. This is pop for Zack Ryder. One punch and he's dead five seconds later. Yeah. Then uh. brings out Kofi Kingston. And it's like, no. And then as, as, um, uh, as Big Show is trying to crawl through the door, Brodus Clay is like, no, no, you better I, not. No, you better not. Oh, oh, Laronitis is trying to do something. Hold on a second, Joe. And and Clay grabs Laronitis so that Cena, because Laronitis is swinging his little crutch. Yeah, so Cena, Cena gets I, out and wins. Yeah. Oh God. Oh. So Laronitis has <sighs> been on a crutch all night long. I guess at the end, it's supposed to imply that. He, he was, was faking. faking it. He was faking but the whole time. Wasn't he really injured? <laughs> no. In no, no, he wasn't. He's been faking this injury since Over the Limit. Yeah, he's been selling the Cena beatdown that he got um, from Over the okay, Limit. It was Despite the fact I'm pretty sure that match done. ended with him doing a victory lap. So Cena picks him up for the AA. Vince gets in his face and says, You're fired! And Cena FUs him through the Spanish announce table. <laughs> and Michael Cole's like, What's going to happen now that Raw and SmackDown no longer have a general manager? Cole? You're going to hire someone else. It's going to be Rick. the most annoying guy no, tonight. But it's, he it's gonna, sucked tonight. What gonna, the hell? It's going to be Ric Flair. What? Yeah, they, they rehired him. They got to do something with him. Wait, when did yeah, they make sense. Him? I thought I thought TNA was still doing that whole you can't touch our talent. Nope. He left right after that. <laughs> right before that. Oh, they've had Flair as the GM before. Why not again? You know what? I'm 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 not that but you know, I gotta talk about this a little bit more. I I I have not cared for John Laronitis since he showed up last year at Money in the Bank. I haven't. Okay. John Laronidas doesn't care about you either. Shut up, Laronidas. <laughs> the men are talking. I have not cared. I understand. You, you know who was a good lackey for Vince McMahon? Pat Patterson. Gerald Briscoe. The Stooges. They were good lackeys. John Laronidas is the most in a little pissant of a person who doesn't make good decisions who obviously doesn't make good decisions and for some reason is still in the spotlight and I, I, I just don't understand why they thought oh you'd make a good on screen talent right John you, you, you were on uh, you were part of the dynamic dudes right yeah so, tell me this. Better or worse than Mike Adamley? Better. Definitely better. better. or worse than original Vicky Guerrero? Worse. 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 Because Vicky originally got shockingly good, but when she first started, ooh. Yeah. Vicky Guerrero really came into her own after she uh, stopped trying to play a role she wasn't meant to be. She's a good manager. And, you know, I hate to say this, but I would have loved to see this Vicky Guerrero with Eddie. That would have been awesome. Orderly! Her managing heel Eddie, that would have been great. Uh, things that could have been. 
Yeah, things that could have been. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, I think it's time to play. Oh, why did he have to take so many drugs? Yeah, I know. Well, we uh, know so why. I... Wrestler wouldn't have got hired to the WWE in the first place if we did do all the moroids. But anyway, so allegedly. I guess, anyway. I guess we're done now. Um, yeah, that's pretty much I, it. I guess we'll mm -hmm. finish it up with it's all HBK's fault. Uh, I'll, you know, I... I have my yep. first and only wrestling OTP, and it's HBK's fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, overbooked finishes are all HBK's fault. So many chin locks are HBK's fault. The fact that two random jobbers take him off the street and put him in a match with Ryback is all HBK's fault. Uh, well, I guess that pretty much wraps it up for the night, ladies and gentlemen. Just yep. wait a second. That we have a sheet here that to officially list all of our little plugs, don't we? Yeah. Who wants to read it? <laughs> oh, I'll do it. Yay, show time! <laughs> so, don't forget to subscribe to us on Blip TV or our YouTube to keep up to date with all our videos. You can also like us on Facebook, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. At Dark Max Wrestling. Uh, you can follow us individually on, on Twitter as well. Um, and don't forget to check out ERE Productions, where all our video plus a lot of other great stuff is hosted. We're also on Reviewtopia in the community section. And last, and certainly not least, visit us, visit us at the Spoonie Experiment Forum, specifically the Wrestle Wrestle section, where we like to hang out. And you can chat with us and do other things with us. I make things so creepy. We take PayPal payments. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been fun having all of you with us tonight. For everyone at the Dark Match, I'm Jingus. I'm your fox friend, Backlash. I'm Duo's Angel. I'm Iron Bite, and I think this was the, the shortest show with me and Jingus on it. Possibly. Good night, everybody, and good luck.